uh, Jenny Rhodes. For those that don't know, don't know me, I work for the University of Maryland Extension. I'm the county ag agent here in the county, or the extension educator for ag and natural resources, but county ag agent is certainly uh, much easier. So I want to welcome you to the 27th annual Harvest Breakfast. I really can't believe it's been 27 years. I think I've come to just about everyone, and there's probably some people in this room, maybe Mr. Bobby Barton, that's probably been to everyone. What do you think, Mr. Bob? Probably. <laughs> so today we come together to celebrate our harvest. Uh, we're very lucky here in uh, Queen Anne's County. We've had a, had a very good year this year, not only in agriculture, but certainly in our other businesses here. So we're going to get started. I want to introduce you to a new face, uh, Dr. Paul Rickard. He is our area extension director. So his job is to keep me straight. Uh, but he takes care of the uh, Queen Anne's County office, the Kent County Extension office, and the Cecil County office. So Paul? Wow, good morning. What a great turnout we've got this morning. Uh, so congratulations, Queen Anne's County, for getting up early. Uh, <laughs> I'm pleased to be here, and I'm thrilled to be in the new position I am in uh, here in Queen Anne's County, Kent and Cecil as well. I live up in Elkton on the Chess City side, uh, and so I get to make this beautiful drive down here at least weekly, if not a couple of times every week. Uh, and, and I've only been in my position for about three months, so many of the faces uh, I do not know, but I look forward to getting to know you. and. I look forward to working together with you to benefit the farmers, our communities, uh, nutrition, uh, and all the other various ways that Extension works together with the local communities. Uh, so I just want to, I know breakfast is awaiting, so I don't want to take too much time. So uh, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Please come up afterwards. I'd love to, to chat with you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. So we're going to, um, I'm going to do the rest of the introductions after we eat because breakfast is ready. So um, we are very fortunate here this morning. We have all the officers of the Queens County High School FFA with us and our new FFA ag teacher. Where is Brian? He's here somewhere. There he is. Brian is, Brian, stand up. So this is our new ag teacher. So, uh, so uh, first, I'm going to call uh, Malin Rhodes up. She's the reporter for Queens County High School FFA. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day you have given to us and the food we are about to eat. Lord, I pray that you would bless the hands of those who have prepared and grown this meal. We thank you for the farmers of Queen Anne's County. Lord, I pray that you would bless their land and give them strength and wisdom as they continue to provide for us. Lord, we also thank you for the wisdom and knowledge our government and business provide to us to feed those who are in need of nourishment. Lord, please bless this food to our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Next, I'll call up Jennifer Gannon. She's our president of FFA. She's going to do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure if uh, Caroline Winterstein is here. She is our little Miss Farm Bureau. I haven't seen her. Any, I, okay. Well, then I'll ask um, Jennifer, you want to lead us in the 4-H pledge? Okay. I pledge my head to clear thinking my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, we will do one introduction. You know, this, this is really a partnership between um, the University of Maryland Extension, the Queen Anne office, and the Chamber of Commerce. And Linda Friday is the president of our Queens County Chamber of Commerce. And she does such a great job. So Linda, if you'll come up and give us a few words. Good morning. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, we do really appreciate the um, partnership that we've had for the many years. I've actually been in my position for 15 years, and I've been coming for 15 years. So thank you for this um, great breakfast we're going to have. Just uh, can I have a, our board members stand? I know Al just came in. I know Ralph. Um, and and John, um, thank thank our board members for getting up early this morning and 
uh, coming in for breakfast, and thank you for your service. Yes, we have some county commissioners here with us today. I think Mark Anderson is here, and Jack Wilson. Where's Jack? And Steve. Where's Steve? I saw Steve, too. So thank you uh, to the county commissioners for being here. We also have our um, Secretary of Ag, Joe Bartenfelder. I'll get him to come up later and give some, give some words of wisdom to us. And our Deputy Secretary, um, Joe Bartenfelder. I bet Jim Eichhorst is here. Can't read my notes, so Jim, thank you. Um, I especially want to thank um, the staff of the University of Maryland Extension in Queen Anne's County. This would not be possible without that, and also the staff of the Soil Conservation District. We work together and do a lot of different things, so I would like all of them to stand up, our staff and the Soil Conservation Dif District. So, so this is why we're here. And then you know that each and every one of you are very important and very special, but I can't introduce everybody, so I'm going to ask all the farmers to stand up in the room. So give them a big round of applause for all the things that they do. Then I'm going to ask all the members of the Chamber of Commerce to stand. So these are the businesses that work hard every day for us. And then if you work for the government, so if you are a state, county, or um, officials, stand up. And a lot of us wear a lot of different hats. Um, and how about our master gardeners? Our master gardeners are part of our extension uh, program. They do a lot of volunteer hours. I know there's several of them here that work. Now, first I'm going to ask the current FFA members to stand up. And I want you to stay standing up. Okay, now I want everybody in the audience, if you are an FFA, I want you to stand up. So I want to see the impact of what FFA and... Now, wait a minute, hold on. If you were in 4-H, I want you to stand up. So, congratulations to everybody. So I want everybody really just to see how important, how important these leadership programs are because these are why you're here today, because you are really a leader. I'd like um, to have just a moment of silence. I feel like this year that we have lost a lot of uh, people and a lot of um, young people that it's kind of hard to go to those viewings and funerals. So let's just have a moment of silence for those people. Okay, thank you. All right, so you know, uh, we get to start out and I get to give you a little recap of what has gone on in agriculture in the year and um, I can't say enough really how blessed we are uh, in agriculture. We had a, had a really a pretty good, um, had a good winter. We had agronomy day started out, you know, that's when we bring the research-based information to the um, out to the farmers. Uh, we had a Women in Ag conference that's in, it's a regional mid-Atlantic uh, conference that's in Dover every year. We had, we really had record attendance at a lot of our programs. We have an organic grains uh, conference that we put on every year. But things went really well. We had a pretty good spring other than a little bit of rain and some farmers had to plant two or three times, but we got through it. Um, things went well. Summer was good. Um, Certainly, it got a little warm during the county fair. The county fair started out pretty well. Towards the end of the week, um, it got really warm. Uh, even I had to take a little break um, from the fair. But in all, it was good. I did a lot of um, working. I worked with Shore Leadership this year, and I worked with Lead Maryland. We spent a whole day with Lead um, with Shore Leadership, and for me. Uh, it's hard to explain the feeling of being able to teach people about what we do. And people, I'm like, did you learn one thing? They're like, no, we learned 10 things. We learned 100 things. So I think all of us really need to work to connect, to you know, teach people about uh, leadership and about agriculture and about what we do. Uh, we work with LEAD Maryland. They had the, um, the poultry conference was here on, on the shore and worked with them and took uh, 25 LEAD Maryland fellows from all over um, Maryland. 
Um, and we spent the day with Purdue and Mount Air and learning about the poultry industry and certainly an important part of it. Uh, let's see. So, um, of course, I have to say something about weather and prices, because if I didn't say that, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be farmers. So we either have too much rain or not enough rain, or the prices are too low, or uh, they're never too high, of course. But, <laughs> um, but we have uh, wheat, unfortunately, is at an all-time low. So you probably won't see a lot of farmers. They didn't plant as much wheat as, as they usually do. But I have to say congratulations to Queen Anne's County, because we were number one in the amount of acres pledged to be planted for cover crop. So hats off to the farmers and the Soil Conservation District uh, for that. So the cover crops, if you don't know, if you see anything green growing in the field right now, that's a cover crop. So we plant cover crops to take up excess nutrients. Uh, we, help, we plant cover crops to keep the soil intact. Um, it helps soil health. So there's lots of reasons why we plant, um, plant cover crops. It did get a little dry uh, towards the end of the, of the summer and maybe did hurt a little bit of our double crop beans, but really in all, we were very blessed. This summer, our office um, had the great, because of our area extension directors and other people, we were able to hire an intern this summer. Janelle Eck, as many of you know, Miss Maryland Agriculture, has come to work in our office 20 hours a week. And she's going to Chesapeake right now, and then she's going to move on to University of Delaware. But I just I want to make this point, and I want to encourage each and every one of you to think about how you could hire someone or mentor someone as an intern in your business. I think that it's really important that we bring young people in, we show them what we're doing, and it really gets that interest. So not only in the farming community, but you know, in our businesses and the, and the different things that we do. So Janelle has been working on a couple different things. Uh, she's been working on ag careers so that when we go to career fairs, we can show, you know, there's not, it's not just about being a farmer. There's 235, what, official ag jobs out there. And I think there's even more to come. But one thing I do want to share with you, Janelle has been working on Agriculture Awareness Day. So we have come together, um, soil conservation, FSA, uh, the research, uh, Y research, extension. Who else is on that list? The list goes on and on. Um, Kent County Young Farmers, our Queens County Young Farmers Farm Bureau. So we've all always really wanted to get the word out. We need to do a better job to our young people. So we have decided to work on the seventh graders. We're going to bring them all here to the park, probably two days in April, and we're going to have five different stations, and we're going to take them around and teach them about agriculture and about what careers are out there. So with that said, I will be looking for volunteers. Janelle and I will be looking for volunteers and also sponsors. So if you're interested, uh, please let us know about that. So again, don't forget about that mentoring and internship. I think that's um, really important. So I was kind of worried about how the attendance would be because you know I pushed back the date. I decided since the harvest um, was going to be a little late this year, we would wait until after Thanksgiving. So I'm glad to see that it really did not um, hurt any of our attendance. We also decided to change up the venue a little bit. Instead of asking you to bring um, a canned good this year, we thought that we would do something a little different. I had the good fortune to be invited um, to a meeting at Luke and Allison Howard's farm to talk about the Eastern Shore Bo Food Bank. I knew a lot, I knew some about the food bank, but I really didn't get to know about the Maryland Food Bank until I was in Lean, Maryland. And Kurt and I were in that same class. And we spent a day in Baltimore working um, with the food bank, and I'll never forget that day because Walmart officials were there, and I'm like, well, why are Walmart people here at you know, the food bank? And they were working that day. They had brought in all these backpacks, and they were trying to figure out what food to put in those backpacks for those kids in Baltimore City because they said when those kids left school on Friday, they would not get food, a lot of them, until the next Monday, and that's pretty impactful. So. When we talk about the Eastern Shore um, branch, there's a little flyer on your table, so make sure that, that you read that. But there's 47,000 individuals on the Eastern Shore that are food insecure. So what is food insecurity? It's, it, I looked it up. It says a state of being without reliable source of or access to sufficient quality of affordable and nutritious food. So I believe 47,000 people are more than the What's the, um, about 45,000 in Queen Anne's County, so. 
And 17 of those 47,000 are children. So think of that. Um, and you'll go on to read in here, for every fund, uh, for every dollar that we donate, um, we can provide three meals to someone that's hungry in Maryland. So I think that is uh, pretty impactful. And I also learned that the Eastern Shore Branch does not take enough money in to cover their expenses. So that's one of the reasons why we ask for monetary donations today. So thank you all for your donation. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, after our speaker. So I think next, I am going to call um, our Secretary of Ag, Joe Bartenfelder, up and ask if he wants to give a few words before I introduce our speaker. If he can get up. Watch. Yeah. You got plenty of time. Well, it, it's really a, an honor to be here and, and see everybody this morning. When, when Jenny tells me to come up and say a few words, believe me, I know it it's, means a few words. <laughs> so I found that out before. But <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, it's really been a privilege to be able to represent all of you uh, as far as agriculture in Annapolis. And it's been an honor to be able to serve uh, Governor Hogan and, and Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford because they are so uh, committed to agriculture and farming in this state because uh, we were talking before uh, this got started, agriculture farming here in, in the state is really our, our number one generator as an industry of revenue <coughs> across the board. So that's why it's, it's, uh, you know, it, it's so important. And I think we're starting to make a lot of legislators realize its importance and also the steps that the farm community and the ag community has taken uh, for environmental protection of our bay and everything not only in the past couple of years, uh, but in, in the recent past. And we've done that through our, I guess you would call it our legislator educator program by bringing the legislators out to the farms to visit. Uh, Jenny had a group uh, to her farm. We went to uh, Chip Councils and, and what was the other Paul one? Spees. Paul Spees. Paul Spees, yeah. And, and we did that tour that day with the House and the Senate committee members, and it's really important for them to see firsthand and hear firsthand uh, when they have those legis the legislation and everything before them, uh, what effect it's going to have uh, if it passes. And uh, you know, we're trying to make them you know, realize that. And also, by the turnout here today, and I don't have to tell anybody here that, you all realize how important it is to work with our extension people in using the facts and science that they have to help guide us uh, through the future. Um, now, as far as the food bank goes, I'm going <clears> to <throat> shout out one thing. Now, I've been working with the, with the Maryland Food Bank for, is that what it is? <laughs> say Amy knows, six years. I was going to say a number of years. I was trying to think when. And the reason why I was trying to think when it was is because I was out there chopping off some sweet corn that was left over and a young lady pulled in the field there in a pickup truck. It was an older one at that time. And uh, he said, hey, you know, what are you doing? And, you know, we can use this. And we kind of formed that partnership when you have four rows of sweet corn left. Might be four or five hundred dozen in, in those rows and they would come in and, and uh, we actually started using uh, the prisoners that that you got out to, to pick that, uh, get it off, um, put it in the bins, put it in the, in the building, and then we would load you up when, when they came. And it, it really worked well. You, you never plan anything, actually, just to give it away. But as a farmer, you don't plan it to chop it up and watch it lay in the field and rot. So uh, I'd much rather donate it uh, to the food bank to have people who need it, use it, and just chop it up and, and, and let it go to waste. And I think the program is, has really grown a lot. In fact, it's grown so much that the person has done such a good job, and this, this is a bad rumor that I heard, and I guess it's true. It's not true? Bad rumor. So you're not? It's true. You're staying? Well, Okay, Amy's done, Amy's done a great job for us here at the Maryland Food Bank, but she's leaving. I was giving a little special kudos to her. So, Amy, call. You've done a great job. Stamp, take a bow. <laughs> and, 
And, and see, she does such a great job, she's always aware of her surroundings. And I'm going to tell you how aware of her surroundings she is. Because, uh, you know, even on days when I do get to Annapolis, sometimes I, I still have my farm clothes on. And I'll jump in the truck and make a delivery and, and then back the truck up at the loading dock behind the MDA building and go on in with my jeans and flannel shirt on. And, you know, when you're going up Route 50 and your phone beeps and you don't bother looking at it, and then later on you pull it out and you have a text message on there that says, oh, I didn't see the Secretary of Agriculture today. I seen Farmer Joe. <laughs> so... People always see you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, and, and then you look and say, that's, that's not Mark. That's not Joey. I wasn't on the phone, was I? I wasn't. I was only looked like I was on the phone. I was talking to Jim Eichhorst. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk any longer because, like I said, I, I learned better than that. It, huh? No, I'm not going to introduce signs. <laughs> when, because uh, J Jenny wanted me to introduce Hans. Hans is the best dressed assistant secretary we have. <laughs> and, you know, when, when, whenever uh, I show up and I happen to have the jeans or the flannel shirt on, he has a suit and a tie on. I mean, you know, he, he always looks, looks good. Uh, last year he, he introduced me and, uh, you know, we went over all my remarks that I was going to make here. And, and then when he introduced me, he managed to hit every point that I was going to make and introduce <laughs> me. But Hans does do a, a really good job for us in, in nutrient management. And, uh, you know, I, I will introduce him because it's, it's really been fun uh, having him on board. And, um, you know, I think he's really enjoyed some of the field trips, I guess you would say, the day trips that we make uh, with me, you, and uh, my special assistant when he drives. And uh, you can uh, elaborate any on that if, if you want. But he uh, does a great job for you. And, and uh, I, I've seen when we did, when she did the introductions a little bit earlier, and she was introducing the farmers. And then and she said, and finally, all those other people who, who just work for the government in some capacity. Hans stood up and went, oh, Hans stood up. <laughs> works for the government. Well, just remember, we may work for the government, but we work for you. And we're still farmers, same as everybody here is. So, Hans Schmidt, come on up. <laughs> right? Yeah. He said he don't now, I thought you wanted him to come up. No, he doesn't. Well, why'd you say introduce him? Because he's important. He well, is He's a Queens County farmer, so that's why he's important. I wanted to make sure that he got Jeff, introduced. She did it to me again. <laughs> she said, will you introduce Hans? I like to give the secretary a hard time, as, as you can see. So, mm. uh. so Joe, to you and your staff, you do a wonderful job. And Joe is always a phone call away. And when I need him, I can always call him. Oh, gosh, she's got to say something else. Oh, okay. All right. We'll let you go then. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming. All right. So let's move on with our uh, guest speaker. So we are celebrating 75 years of soil conservation in our county. This is really tremendous. So the slideshow that has been running and continue to watch that Tony has uh, put together about in 75 years what has happened here um, in our county with soil conservation. So let me introduce Tony. So Tony um, grew up in Dover. He spent a lot of time actually in northern Queen Anne's County on his grandmother's farm. He received a Bachelor of Science degree in soil and water conservation from Delaware State University. Upon graduation, he began as a career tech in, soil, in Caroline County Soil Conservation District. In 2001, he became the Ag Assessment Planner for the Eastern Shore. He worked as a, a manager here in Queen Anne's County and then left for a little while. And um, he was the CAFO, the Concentrated Animal Feeding Operation operation coordinator for MDA. And then he returned in 2014 um, as district manager. He lives in Delaware with his uh, wife, Sydney. I can't say enough good about um, Tony and what he does. Um, we all have a very good relationship, and we all work um, very good together. So please uh, welcome Tony.
Thank you, Jenny. I don't know if I can follow up Secretary Bartenfelder, but I'll give it a shot. So good morning, and then I'm going to thank the Food Bank. They really do good work, so thank you to the Maryland Food Bank. And Eric, if I'm not talking loud enough, just throw a thumbs up or something. Um, just take a look at these pictures. That's 75 years worth of pictures. It's about 500 pictures. It's hard to put a slideshow together with that many pictures, so that's why we just kind of have it running on a loop. Um, I'd like to recognize our Board of Supervisors. Every Soil Conservation District has a Board of Supervisors, five voting members. Our current board is Bob Wilson, our chairman. He's here with us today. Bill Riggs is our vice chairman. Gene Haymaker is our treasurer. Charles Haynes and Steve Freeman are our other voting members. Our extension agent, Jenny, she serves as our secretary. We have associate board members, Bill Mason, Mark Soltenfuss, Andrew McLean, Rick Weaver, and Steve Krzyzewski. So before I get started, I, some of the things you might know about soil conservation and didn't even know it was about soil conservation is how many people have heard of cover crops? Uh, cover crop, it's a big program. It's uh, one of the most cost-effective programs for reducing nutrients. Uh, and we administer the cover crop program for the Maryland Department of Agriculture. And in Queen Anne's, as Jenny said, we are the leading county uh, in acres of cover crop planted. And we're second in applicants. So um, 157 uh, 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 contracts we had this year. So. Um, Anybody ever heard of the CRP, or Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program? That's where we put grass or tree buffers in, wetlands. Um, we are the technical side of that program, where the Farm Service Agency handles the financials. We handle the technical side of that. Has anyone ever built a house or done any construction in Queen Anne's County in the last 40 years? <laughs> then you've probably dealt with soil conservation, because not only do we work with farmers, but we are in charge of reviewing erosion and sediment control plans from anything from a single lot, house lot, all the way up to uh, an industrial park. Uh, and now we are actually reviewing the stormwater management as well as the NS for new poultry sites, greenhouse operations, and that sort of thing. So it goes a little beyond just cover crop. Um, and there's a lot more we do as well. One of our big uh, programs is the MAX program. It's Maryland Agricultural Cost Share program. That's where we do a lot of our funding. Um, the cover crop is a part of that, but not specifically that. Uh, but we do all our structural programs, any manure sheds for uh, ag waste, dairies, beef, poultry, um, for erosion control, something like a grass waterway, uh, our drop structure, all of our different programs. We use a lot of the max money. Right now, the max money is being held up. So I was going to tell you if you have a chance to grab Secretary Bartenfelder, Deputy Secretary Eichhorst, or Assistant Secretary Schmidt, or you have a chance to talk to the governor, or uh, you know Je Delegate Jacobs or Senator Hershey, let them know how important that max funding is, because right now it's in limbo, um, and we, our farmers really depend on that uh, to put these practices in. So now I'll go a little bit on with the program, a little history. So first, I want to, again, I want to thank the agriculture and business communities for coming together this morning. I'm honored to speak to you about the 75-year history of the Queen Anne Soil Conservation District. Our success is possible because of the confidence our cooperatives have bestowed in us for the last 75 years. The concept of, soil conservation, of the Soil Conservation District was the idea of Hugh Hammond Bennett, a soil scientist from North Carolina, who's known as the father of soil conservation. His early warnings of soil erosion branded him a crank by many of the scientists of the day. But the Dust Bowl of the 1930s would change all of that. So during World War I, the Turkish Navy blockaded the Dardanelles, which shut off the Russian export of wheat. This opened the European market to US wheat farmers. The US government guaranteed $2 a bushel per, wheat, per bushel of wheat and sent out the decree, plant more wheat to win the war. Between 1917 and 1919, wheat acreage increased by 70% in the High Plains, which for 35,000 years was prairie grass. 
The 1920s continued to see the prairie grass plowed to increase wheat production. Flooded grain markets created surpluses and prices dropped. The only way to sustain profits was to increase production. Throughout the decade, the prices continued to drop, and in a final attempt to break even, more wheat acres were cultivated in 1930. And then the rain stopped. On September 14, 1930, a dust storm stirred up over the high plains. Hundreds more would follow as the severe drought continued through 1940. The Dust Bowl, as it became to be known, encompassed more than 100 million acres over portions of six states. The storms would plague the plains, displacing more than a quarter million people, sending 200 million tons of topsoil into the sky. As much as 12 million tons of soil fell on Chicago. The airborne particles darkened the sky in New York City and Washington, D.C. Ships as far as 300 miles off the East Coast were covered in this relocated earth. Hugh Bennett had been pleading his case with Congress to support his initiatives for soil conservation. On April 15, 1935, in what became known as Black Sunday, a mountain of suspended silt and sand, a thousand miles long, moving at speeds of 100 miles an hour, darted across the plains, swallowing 300,000 tons of earth as it raged. Four days later, on April 19, 1935, Hugh Bennett was meeting with senators in Washington. An aide was informing him of the status of the approaching wall of silt heading toward the Capitol. To extend the meeting, Bennett filibustered with stories of his travels to the Civilian Conservation Corps camps, to the many demonstration projects going on throughout the, throughout the country, and of his days on his family cotton farm as a child. Finally, the aide appeared at his side and gave him the signal, it's here. Er, and then Bennett stated, it's here. He took the senators to the window and proclaimed, this gentleman is what I'm talking about. There goes Oklahoma. Eight days later, Soil Conservation Act passed unanimously and funds were allocated. A permanent agency to restore and sustain the soil was created within the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This was the start of the Soil Conservation Service. In a letter to all state governors on a uniform soil conservation law, Franklin, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt heralded that a nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. The Soil Conservation Act allowed Bennett to implement his plan for soil conservation districts, which he described as a neighborhood civil defense committee of the soil. The districts would be governed by a group of five landowners within its boundaries with common interests in soil conservation. The county exec extension agent would serve as its secretary. The Soil Conservation Service would place specialists in the districts specific to the needs of each area. In Maryland, soil conservation officially began in 1935 with demonstration projects, followed by the establishment of the Civilian so Conservation Corps and there were camps of those in Maryland. That was one of President Roosevelt's initiatives to put men back to work during the Depression. There was a Civilian Conservation Corps camp in Goldsboro over in Caroline County in 1935, and it continued through 1942. The purpose of this camp was to provide drainage in Caroline and Queen Anne's County. These young men dug hundreds of miles of ditches, many by hand, which we now typically call tax ditches. And a lot of you probably drive over one of them every day and didn't even realize that, but a lot of those were originally dug by hand by young men just working for room and board. In 1937, Maryland passed the Standard Soil Conservation District's Law. This created the State Soil Conservation Committee to organize, advise, and assist soil conservation districts. The first district to be organized was the Kent Soil and Water Conservation District on May 11, 1938. Today we have 24 districts in all 23 counties of Maryland. In 1945, the 15 existing soil conservation districts established the Maryland Association of Soil Conservation Supervisors, which would become the Maryland Association of Soil Conservation Districts. This group would work alongside the State Soil Conservation Committee in the uh, Soil Conservation Service to deliver the message of conservation to citizens of Maryland. 
The Queen Anne Soil Conservation District was established on December 19, 1941. The original board members were J. Grant Yates as our first chairman, Howard J. Stant, T. Walter Denny, James C. Stevens, and Merton R. R. Sean. 28 dedicated citizens have sat on the board during its history, with several more serving as associate members. And for Royden Powell's family and Hans Schmidt's family, uh, the mission has spanned generations. Actually, one of the slides here has all of our uh, past and current supervisors uh, listed on there. Four of our members, three are rich here today, uh, Bob Wilson, Hans Schmidt, and Royden Powell, and Mr. Walt T. Walter Denny, went on to lead the Maryland Association of Soil Conservation Districts as president. We also had another member that served as treasurer of the Maryland Association of Soil Conservation Districts. George Godfrey and T. Walter Denny are the longest serving supervisors. Royden Powell and Hans Schmidt both left the board to serve as assistant secretary for the Office of Resource Conservation at the Maryland Department of Agriculture. Our district equipment shop, it started in mid-summer 1942. It consisted of a tractor and a grader and a drag line. The shop moved to its current location in 1957 up on Churchill Road, and it has continued to offer its conservation services, and it is the last Soil Conservation District Equipment Division in Maryland. The district has won many awards over the years. Three times we were presented with the Goodyear Award for Conservation, and we're runner-up another three times. We have worked with a teacher who's won the Teacher Award and our Conservation Education Award. George Godfrey was honored as Outstanding Conservation Farmer prior to joining the district. We've had two Outstanding Employee Award winners, Donald Dawkins and Sharon Callisto. In 2005, our county marathon team won the state competition. So the district has been charged with a lot of responsibilities over the last three quarters of a century. One of our big jobs is soil and water conservation plans. That's the first step. One of our planners works with the landowner, walks their farm, sits down with them, lets them know what kind of resource concerns they may see on the farm and what we have to offer to help correct those. Early on, it promoted shoreline protection, flood control, public drainage projects, sediment runoff reduction, no-till farming, cover crops, and crop rotations followed those as practices. Our conservation plans still drive uh, conservation practices, and many of the original trusted practices we still install today. But currently, and with various cost share opportunities and state-of-the-art technologies, we're implementing new and complex practices to improve the natural resources of Queen Anne's County. The district has always supported conservation educational programs. From 4-H and FFA competitions to the Envirothon, the district continues to influence future conservationists. And as Jenny says, we're happy to be working with Extension and FSA and the other farm groups on the uh, Queen Anne's County Ag Day with the seventh graders this coming year. With an increase in urban and suburban areas, the Queen Anne's Soil Conservation District has been entrusted the review and approval of erosion and sediment control plans for co construction. So if you're disturbing more than 5,000 square feet, more than likely you're going to have to do an erosion sediment control plan and you'll be coming through our office. So plans for residential, commercial, industrial, and agriculture operations are reviewed to ensure the sediment does not leave active construction sites uh, during construction, and that's what we review and approve. In the past year, we've also been delegated the review, approval, and inspection of stormwater management practices for agriculture operations. With the ever-evolving responsibilities of the Soil Conservation District, we recently assumed the administration of the Queen Anne's County Ag Land Preservation program. So what does the future hold for Queen Anne Soil Conservation District? 
I don't have a crystal ball, but I assure you that we will continue to provide our cooperators with first-rate assistance and services. We will continue to mentor the next generation of conservationists. We will continue to pursue the most effective methods of conserving our precious natural resources. New technologies, forthcoming programs, and impending regulations may steer us to in unfamiliar and sometimes uncomfortable directions, but we will, with our firm roots in conservation and the support of the conservation community, we will confront these challenges with intensity and accuracy. And finally, I would like to thank the board for all their leadership and service. They are the winds in our sails. I would like to thank our partners for their guidance and support. You provide the programs and the people to promote and implement them. We'd like to thank our district shop for their dedication to putting the practices on the ground. Ink on paper means nothing until systems are put in place on the land. I would like to thank our cooperators because your devotion as stewards of the lands make our jobs easy. And lastly, I would like to thank our staff. Your days can be frustrating, dirty, buggy, thankless, and sometimes mind-numbing, but it does not go unnoticed. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for being here today, and have a good day. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, Tony. So now you all see what soil conservation does. They have a really big job. One thing Tony didn't talk about is they have a cooperator of the year. So the board and the staff talk about, you know, what, who's the cooper that, cooperator that's gone above and beyond and does, you know, has installed all these practices on their farm. So this year the Eck family was recognized. So Mark and Vicki, where are you? And Janelle, there you are. Stand up. So congratulations um, to the Eck family for all they've, for all they've done. If you don't want to know anything else, Tony, also they have a great website. You can find, find out more information about soil conservation. So we're going to wrap up. I do want to call up um, Steve Schwab. He is the director of the Eastern Shore Land Back and Amy Colley. Amy, come on. You're coming up, too. Um, you, you both have to come up. So I have to tell you that my goal for today was $1,000 because I figured we're trying to figure out when we got, we got some, you know, cash donations last year and then the canned goods. So we figured it was about $1,000. So I am ecstatic to tell you, we raised $2,574. Wow. Thanks so much. Just a quick word, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of the Maryland Food Bank Eastern Shore, we really appreciate it. Um, you know, I worked out, I've been on the shore since 1982, uh, working for Purdue. I had a 33-year career with them. So ag is near and dear to my heart. And I always said ag had a big heart, especially for those in need. Um, in my retirement, I'm working a little more closely with the Eastern Shore Branch. And there's no doubt that you all have a tremendously big heart. So really, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. So that concludes um, this year's Harvest Breakfast. I'll see you back um, next year. Have a safe trip home. Um, don't forget to tree lighting in Centerville. It's tonight at 6 o'clock, followed by our Christmas parade. So have a great holiday. Oh, and don't forget to take your glasses and your coasters. Those are all compliments of the Queen Anne Soil Conservation District. Thank you. Oh, and thank you, George. Thanks to Queen Anne TV.